You're listening to GeekCast Radio on GeekCastRadio.com. Hello and welcome to this special episode of GeekCast Radio. This is the 2011 Fall TV Preview. I am one of your hosts, Steve, Joe, and Mike, and I am joined by... Nobody, apparently. I'm doing like this by myself. <laughs> you are joined by Optimus Solo. <laughs> and Steve Megatron Phillips. I just wanted to see how long we could have a pause. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, what's going on with you, Kevin? Uh, well, let's see. You're in Barbie land, aren't you? <laughs> I fucking am in Barbie land. Um, <laughs> I've been trying just because I know nobody else is going to do it to add all the damn direct-to-DVD Barbie movies. I guess I didn't realize there was over 20 of them. Um, <laughs> but I did I did not know until I started doing it that it was basically the Beast Wars mainframe voice actors that were doing a lot of it. Um Ian James Corlett and David Kay and Gary Chalk amongst a bunch of women, obviously. Um, I cannot see Gary Chalk voicing Ken. <laughs> no, there, Ken hasn't even showed up. I've done 13 of these damn movies. Ken has not been in one of them. <laughs> like, it's nice. basically Barbie and a bunch of other people. Occasionally, you might get a Kelly or a Stacy or something. But anyway, so I'm, I'm 13 down, I think, and like seven or eight to go. Um, besides that, uh, Behind the Voice Actors just started their voice acting uh, competition. So that's in its opening stages of auditions. Um, other than that, we just switched servers and we're still kind of sorting out some issues with that to try to make it a little bit faster loads. But we're having a few issues. But um, other than that... Not a whole lot. Um, no, can't think of anything. <laughs> Steve, what have you been up to? Uh, besides little minor tweaks to the website, um, uh, obviously, MWire has a new outro. GCRN will have a new outro by the end of this. Yeah. And uh, pretty much not much else going on. Other than finally releasing uh, Pirates 3 and then 4 will be released before the weekend. (laughs) Excellent. Yes. Um, As for me, well, Hmm. shut up. Sorry. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be recording anything this week because uh, this past Saturday night... I went to go to watch the store, and I, I always go out at night to go across the street to Thornton's. I, I just always do. It's one of those things, you know, you have a late night craving, you want something to eat, you go to the store. And, and thank God, in my case, the store is right across the street. Well, walk out of my building, and the hooligans that live here, morons that just don't know any better, constantly break the lights on the landing outside the apartment building. So... You know, 10 o'clock at night, it's pitch fucking black. I missed the step. My 400 and something pound body went down like a sack of fucking bricks. I twisted my ankle. I sprained my ankle. I laid sprawled in the driveway for about 20 minutes because I could not move. I could not stand on my leg. I could not do anything. The problem is, because of my cerebral palsy, which affects my right arm and right leg... This happened to my left leg, which really sucks because I put all my, it's the dominant leg. It's the one I always use to, you know, to shift my weight and everything else. So, yeah, from Saturday till about, I don't know, two or three days ago, 
I've just been in immense, immense pain. And people are like, why didn't you go to the emergency room? Why didn't you go to the doctor? Blah, blah, blah. Well, when I thought about going to the emergency room, it was Sunday evening because I had waited so long. I figured, okay, well, this is going to, you know, this is going to be, you know, heal 24 hours, 48 hours, something like that. By the time I thought of even going to the emergency room, it was Sunday night. We just passed Labor Day weekend, so or it was Labor Day weekend when it happened. So Sunday, on top of it being Labor Day weekend, emergency rooms? Ain't no fucking real doctors in emergency rooms. Are you fucking kidding me? There's going to be like 20 fucking residents that don't know what, you know, don't know anesthesia from Novocaine. You know, whatever. Uh, it's just like, fuck. So, yeah. Why don't you tell the real story? The hooligans, that is the real the, story. The hooligans broke so, the light and then you went all Chuck Norris no. on them. And fucking kicked them in the face. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I've been, the first couple of days after it, after the initial pain wore off, I, uh, even when I was able to, you know, stand up, I, I was still, and the, the, the problem is because I have such bad balance issues in general, um, having to rely on my right leg and teach myself to use my right leg instead of my left, it's like, Ugh, if you no. weren't trying to hip hop square dance with uh, while being drunk, you wouldn't have been no. having that problem. No, so I've been walking like an undead zombie for the past week and a half. How's that been working for you? <laughs> Not very well, actually. But you know, so that's that's what I've been up to. So that's originally why we were going to do this episode at all, so we could have some. No, give you guys some some content while Mike was laid up. But uh, well, yeah. But then we dragged him along anyway. Yeah, kicking and screaming. Um, so, Kevin, what the hell are we doing? We are, we are. This is perfect timing, actually, everybody, because <laughs> the the previews, the pilots, the premieres are about to hit TV. And I was looking through my DVR um, as the upcoming schedule, and I was trying to figure out what shows I want to record and what pilots and premieres I want to catch. And I was like, geez, I don't even know what all is going on. So what we're doing is we are breaking it down. We are highlighting what people need to catch in the next couple of weeks, months to see if there are shows that they're going to watch for the whole season. We're, we're giving everybody the four one one on what to look for and what to be interested in fall TV preview. Yes. And I have to say before we even really get into this, <clears throat> I would say over the last five years, I barely watch network TV. And when I say network TV, I mean, ABC, CBS, uh, NBC, Fox, CW. I just, Lately, in the past five years, just nothing has really, you know, given me the inclination to watch anything on any of these networks. Yeah. ABC, for one specific reason, it's all fucking reality shows that I just don't care about. Well, you know. I, I, I felt the same way you did for a long time because my problem was, and this is obviously going to show me, that, you know, the the pre technology days, I guess, before I graduated <laughs> into this century. Um, I was never around consistently on a given weekday evening. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, the only shows that I would consistently watch were shows that were broadcast on Sunday night. Because that was the only night that I knew I was going to be home every week. And right. just with my certain schedule, I was never home, you know, two or three Mondays in a row or two and three Tuesdays in a row. So I just gave up on watching uh, current TV. I, yeah. I figured I would catch it later on. If it was a successful show, I could watch it on DVD or something. And I just kind of just stopped watching current shows altogether. And this all changed about uh, last year or the year before because I finally got a, you know, DVR, et cetera, the ability to record shows. And last year was the first year where I said, screw it, I am going to actually record just about every pilot of every show that is new, that is brand new, so mm -hmm. I can give it a one-episode shot, and so certain ones might pass the one episode, and I'll watch it again. Certain ones I'll just cut right away. And obviously there's some that you're just not going to watch based on the description, or you know there are still DVD or DVR restraints where you can only record, obviously, two shows at the same time. For most people, right. yeah. so if it was a third show, I would you know 
base it just on the uh, the description or whatnot. But it was kind of a fun little thing for me to last year to watch all of them and see which ones made it and see which ones made my cut and see which ones made the network cuts and didn't get canceled. Um, so I just thought it would be fun to to look at them all and give us all a better idea of maybe some that we might want to try to catch one or two episodes of. And see, before I let Steve go with his thoughts on this to this part of the episode, that's my biggest problem with network TV. They don't give, like, I understand if a show has really, really, like The Cape on NBC. That had horrible ratings. Nobody liked that fucking show. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, one, that's one of my biggest gripes with network TV. They'll, they'll, they'll pimp something out so long and say, oh, it's going to be great. We're going to have this season, this season, this season. We're going to have all this, hmm. this stuff. And, you know... They start it, and then they gradually stop promoting it. Um, specifically, even though it's a reboot, specifically the Knight Rider reboot, they stop promoting that like after episode 15. Uh, NBC, another one of theirs that I lo- loved, I thought it was a great premise, but that they stopped, they just let it go, it was my own worst enemy that only got one season. Um, well, most of them don't even get that long, and that's been I one know. of my biggest complaints know, yeah. from from when I was like a kid. Is every time I had a, a new favorite show that I would like really get into, it was just immediately canceled. Like they yeah. never lasted. And these days, it's not only just one season. These, ep- I mean, half the shows last year got canceled after less than three episodes. Yeah, like that's my not other- even enough time for anybody to actually get the gist of it. I know. My other real complaint, and then I'll stop. My other real complaint with network TV is. Nowadays, you have, I would say, maybe three genres on network TV. <laughs> or, well, yeah. maybe five, five genres on network TV. One of them being sci-fi, which that's fine. The other being reality. Meh. Uh, vampires, werewolves, whatever. Supernatural stuff. Yeah. And, and then the rest of it is... Then you got your sitcoms and your crime dramas. Well, crime dramas are all right, but the the sitcoms, the sitcoms nowadays, at least the ones that I've seen, they all rely on crappy dick and fart jokes. <laughs> and it's like, Jesus, like, I don't find any of the comedies nowadays, like, the only comedy I watch regularly is The Big Bang Theory. Other than that, the rest of them I just don't like. What's your thoughts on the state of TV currently, Steve? Well, part of the problem is, uh, and I've noticed this, like, I got into, just from Netflix, uh, shows that I missed the first time around, mm-hmm. uh, such as uh, I was watching Flash Forward. It was a 20-something episode, one-season shot, and it got canned. Mm-hmm. It was a really good uh, storyline. Granted, it basically told you how everything was going to be at the beginning, but it, you know, it. In in any case, well thought out shows don't seem to last very long anymore, and no, it seems th- like a lot of the the garbage and uh, uh, reality shows keep getting the spotlight, and it's just downright annoying anymore. Yeah, like last year, it seemed like the, the ones that I got most interested in all got canceled. Like I, I was watching Chicago Code, which had a decent premise. You know, we there wasn't a, there's a lot of crime dramas, but there wasn't that many shows that we've had that are going into the political, you know, the the city machine type thing. That was kind of interesting. There was a a movie I can't even remember what it, or a show I can't even remember what it was called about uh, con team son and dad. Um, and there was a couple other ones that were somewhat interesting that just. It was like a deeper, complex plot is going to take more than one or two episodes. Yeah. Meanwhile, the only show that got renewed that I would even watch last year was Hawaii Five O, and that's not complex at all. No. You no, know, I mean that's just an entertaining, you know, forty-five yeah. minutes where you don't even have to think. And I guess that's what it takes to have a successful show these days. Yeah. And the but, sad uh, thing is, they launch so many different sh- series on each network at the same time. Mm-hmm. They're competing with their previous uh, shows that are still ongoing that that are doing well, uh, and then they're competing with all these new reality shows and then the older reality shows. So pretty much they kind of get squeezed out right as soon as they start, and maybe one or two squeak by out of like the nine or ten that uh, yeah. get get started. And they have to be in like like there's only a couple time slots that you even have a chance. It seems like. 
And well, I know, and it has to be earlier. Most of the shows I'm, I'm noticing, newer ones, are coming on at like nine, ten o'clock. Well, for instance, like I don't watch TV after you know after the ten o'clock time slot. Like I, I do not watch. Yeah. I watch from like nine to ten, you know, eight to nine, whatever. But uh, like, for instance, my wife watches shows, and there's some that she likes, but she can't watch them because she has to get up early in the morning. So that's well. And if you think about it, you got some juggernauts that you're going against. If you're like in the, um, if you're in like the height of the season, you have a uh, two days out of the week that you're going against like an American Idol or or some type of show like that. You have a couple days of the week where you're probably going against a CSI or like an NCIS or one of those huge shows it, or like one of the dancing competitions. Like there's not that many times during the week where you're not going against something that you just can't compete with. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not saying I like all those shows, but they're not shows that you can compete with ratings wise. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, in 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 any of even though I mainly have only paid attention to CS the, the original CSI CSI Las Vegas, in that show's case and in the case of NCIS the the, the regular NCIS not in Los Angeles, the case with those two they've been on so long that they've established their you know <clears throat> they've established the characters they've established their ratings they've established this they've established that you know what I find troubling is. The fact that you're bringing in all these new crime dramas to replace Law and Order. Um, I found out news this past week that uh, Christopher Maloney could not reach a contract negotiation with <laughs> uh, with the Law and Order SVU people. Yep, and that'll be and the end of that. Is, and, and he's leaving, and they're bringing in two. And then um, Mariska Hargitay's character... Her role is going to change in the show. She's going to be more of like a supervisor, and they're bringing in two new detectives. I mean, Law and Order Special Victims Unit has always changed a couple of detectives here and there. You can't change those two. They've never changed those two, and it's always been them, Munch, and Finn. And like I said, say 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 Munch is off somewhere doing something. They would bring someone in for Finn, or or, or vice versa. I I don't think. Oh. Like, honestly, as much as I love Special Victims Unit, I don't think it's going to last past maybe. Look at, the look at Law and Order as an example. You can switch oh. out all kinds of the assistant DAs and this and that, but once you took the, the heart of it out, how long did it last? You know what I mean? How, how long did it last after, whatchamacallit, left the show? Yeah. I can't, yeah, I can't no, remember I know, his name, yeah, but uh, Jerry Orbach, after he left, it was over. Well, Jerry... Jerry passed away. I know, I'm just saying, but after he was off the show, how long did it last? You you can't replace someone who's been on that long. Yeah, and I mean, the thing of it is, is, I mean, he left, and then Ed Green left, and then they brought in uh, Anthony Anderson and Jeremy Sisto, which I kind of like those two a little bit. But gradually, that, that show is, it's just... Uh... I love Law and Order Classic and SVU, and I even love Criminal Intent. But Criminal Intent ended this past year. Um, Law and Order ended before it got its twenty first season. Um, you know, it's, it's was last year Law and Order's last year, or was it the year before? I think it was last year. Yeah, and this is the first TV new fall season that's not going to have a Law and Order in like twenty some years. I th- yeah. But I mean, it's like you know, sh- you know, and the and the same thing can be said for the comedies. I mean, the way I weigh my comedies nowadays, and I know this is bad, the way I weigh any comedy nowadays is, is it anything like what I watched as a kid? Hmm. And I mean, it, it, what I mean by that is, is it going to capture my attention? Like Alf, Alf was hilarious. Alf captured my attention. The Cosby Show, right? Funny as hell. That was a great show. Lasted what twelve years? Something and like it's that. like none of these shows nowadays they let like like we've said earlier that they're just not given enough of a chance regardless of what they're going up against they they just don't give them enough of a chance so uh what are what's going to be the format for this well basically how we're going to break it down to try to make it easier for everybody that's listening um we're just going to deal with the networks right now the the cbs abc nbc uh fox cw whatever if i missed one in there um we're just gonna go monday go through the week monday through friday give you guys the possibilities for stuff you may want to check out each day of the week. Um, once we get through that, that'll be the bulk of the show. We'll touch a little bit on some, maybe some possible mid season replacements. Cause there's a couple hyped up shows that are coming in mid season. 
We'll briefly touch on the cable networks, the pay cable networks like Showtime and HBO. None of us get that, so we're not going to spend a lot of time, but we will mention a few shows there. And then mm-hmm. we're going to end it just by looking at some of the fun, out there, crazy shows <laughs> that may be debuting on the rest of the channels. And what we, what I mean by the rest of the channels is like True TV and uh, MTV and uh, whatever, the, the Learning Channel or something, or BBC or the Travel Channel, just some of those random TLC type shows. So that's yeah. how we're going to end it. So hopefully at the end of the day, you'll have a couple shows that you might want to uh, check out and you can set your DVR for them. Coming to you on Monday. So Monday people, Monday. <laughs> I, I think the, we're starting with probably the one that has had the biggest promotional budget Ever. <laughs> Ever, at least this year for sure. Um, and that is the Fox show Terra Nova. Um, <laughs> now, for those of you that haven't seen the 3,000 previews for this, it's going to be on Fox uh, 8 o'clock starting September 26th. And it's basically a Steven Spielberg show where we take a family from the year 2149 and we put them back into prehistoric earth and their job basically is to save the human race from some type of environmental catastrophe um steven lang the guy from avatar it it seems like he's playing the the leader of the group um and of course there's just a whole cast of characters and uh you know we don't see a whole lot other than the fact that they're living back with the dinosaurs um i don't know what have you guys thought of the previous for terra nova you go steve uh, it doesn't. It, it looks interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure how much I'll like it, just because I generally don't get into these kind of shows uh, that are just on regular TV. But uh, it, it does bode well for it, being that there's so many science fiction writers in here, kind of meshing their ideas into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, namely from as much as i despise avatar uh (laughs) that you know you've got that you've got star trek the next generation uh yeah it's just it i i'm interested to see how this is gonna be portrayed I, i like the time travel thing the time travel thing is interesting. I think they have really done an all-out thing as far as the special effects and how the dinosaurs look. Um, so it, visually, it should be an, an appealing series. It, so basically, this is Back to the Future meets Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh, God. It's an interesting idea. The, the Visually, it's going to be very appealing. And it's got some big names in there as far as the people behind the scenes and whatnot. It's just, it's all going to come down to, you know, how well they tell the story and how quickly they can capture people's uh, attention, I think. Yeah. it's It has a lot of potential. I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Um, but I'm not going to say oh, I'm going to right now watch the entire first season. I'm going to watch an episode or two and see what it, see what happens. But that one, that one is the big one for Monday. Go ahead, Mike. As a kid, most kids that grew up in the 80s and most kids nowadays, as children, all boys love dinosaurs. You know, I would say between 5 and maybe 11 years old, all boys love dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. And I was like that as a kid. I saw the first Jurassic Park. That was it. Nowadays... I have no interest in dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, well, I, I would still well, watch Jurassic Park. Having Steven Spielberg back in television and what is he executive producing or create? Uh, you never know with Spielberg. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, just just having his name on it, it's probably going to do well. Uh, but it's not something I'm going to watch, really. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I mean, I, like I said, I'm going to give it a shot and and see what happens, but. That that is the only new one Monday wise as far as the you know the sci fi drama epic type of of show. Um, the other one on Monday it seems like it's going to appeal to a completely different crowd. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other one that you may have seen previous for is called the Playboy Club, and that's an NBC show 
That's actually starting September 19th. Uh, it's a it's a period piece, basically. It's a 60s, 1960s piece on the very first Playboy Club in Chicago. Um, this is probably the most original thing on television right now. <laughs> well, it's one of two 60s pieces that we're going to get this season, um, and we'll talk about the other one later. This one, I don't know, it seems like they're a little confused as to what exactly they want to do. I mean, we're, we're going to have, obviously entertainers and gangsters and politicians that are attending the, this Playboys Club. Um, but it seems like they're also trying to tie in some like murder mystery type stuff in there, and I don't exactly know how that plays in. So if they can get it right, maybe some people from that time period will appreciate it. To me, it's not something that interests me at all. I've always liked the... Um you know, nowadays going back and doing period pieces like this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, take, um, even though it was back in 1987, you take The Untouchables that was made in 87, that was a period piece on Al Capone. I mean, I've always liked period pieces like this. And as I said a second ago, I think this is probably going to be the most original show that NBC has done in the last five years that isn't a remake or that isn't, you know, it, it, it's something completely different than what they would normally do. And it's, it's bringing you a sort of almost PG 13 look into the world of playboy. Yeah. Uh, whether that's going to be good for NBC or not, I don't know. <laughs> but the one thing that really surprises me about this, and I follow him on Twitter and just, he's really excited about this. David Krumholtz. Um, uh, Bernard from the Santa Claus and uh, Michael Ekman from Ten, you know, Mister. I have a dick on my face, don't I? Has uh, has has a role in this, and I'm probably just gonna watch to see what he does, and and I'm gonna watch in general just to see what the show is, at least for a few episodes. Well, and and the other thing that's interesting about it, kind of a little added touch here, and kind of maybe also trying to chime in on the obsession that uh, today's generation has on the whole musical scene. The show's going to have a recurring gimmick of casting modern-day pop stars as 60s-era singers. Um, As long as they don't bring in Lady Gaga, I'm fine. Well, it says the first one is going to be Colby Calais, who's going to perform Leslie Gore's It's My Party. So, I don't know. She's not that bad. No, she's not that bad. But, uh, Steve, what do you think about the Playboy Club? Um, I, I do agree with Mike that it's probably one of the most original things NBC's done in a while. Uh, I think that it might do them well in the sense that everything is pretty much sex driven nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and let's face it, NBC doesn't have squat going on half the time anymore anyway, if it mm-hmm. doesn't manage to get canceled. Um, uh, the only thing really here is pretty much going to appeal with eye candy and the musical part. Right. And I mean, I, I would really like to see some inside stuff like what was for, you know, this is basically like, you know, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. Like, what were they doing? What was their life like at these types of clubs and stuff like that? It's an interesting thing, but I think it's going to be like you said, basically just eye candy and, and the music part. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure, like, quite how this is going to boil over. I, I probably won't watch it other than, like, just, you know, if it's uh, in passing. Mm-hmm. But being that it's a 10 o'clock time slot, I more than likely won't be watching it. A yeah. lot of the shows that we're going to be talking about today, a majority of them, it's kind of like you, Kevin, where you'll catch them two years after they're right. off. You know, for me, I mean, yes, I am going to watch, say, the first couple episodes of Playboy Club, but if I can't keep up with it, I'll have to step back, right. wait till it comes to DVD, and then watch the entire series or entire seasons. You know. Well, and that's why I kind of like to see these pilots, regardless of if I'm going to be able to watch them all that season. If I catch a pilot or the first couple episodes of these shows, then at least I know to either you know put it in the back of my head as, hey, I eventually want to check this out yeah. once it's run its course, or this is not for me. And that's why I like watching just those first couple episodes, so I can make that decision and then be done with it. Yeah. yeah. See, I do the same thing. And then on the other hand, uh, I do know that some, like NBC has some of this too, uh, some stations... Uh, some of these network stations have uh, their shows airing a couple days after they air on TV on Netflix. Yeah. Because, for instance, when Heroes was on, 
uh, because we weren't home, we were working at the time. Uh, I'd catch it on Netflix two days after and be able to watch it commercial free. There you go. Um, another hour long uh, network show that we have on Mondays that's going to be premiering is called Heart of Dixie. Now, this is on the CW starting September 26th. This is basically um, Rachel Bilson, who most people will recognize from the OC. She is playing a somewhat unbelievable uh, New York City doctor who basically cannot get a job in New York and ends up moving to a small southern town because this guy had kept pestering her. So she she finally goes down. When she gets there, that guy is dead, and she inherits his part of the practice, his half of the practice. Um, and then in the little trailer that that it is available, we find out that that guy was actually her dad that she didn't know. Um, so she is basically kind of the whole fish out of water, you know, take someone from New York, throw them in Alabama. They're a doctor type thing. Now I do like Rachel Bilson. Um, I don't know if I buy her as a doctor, but this one could be interesting. It's going to attract those people that like the gossip girl, OC Gilmore girls type of story. Yeah. Um, and so that's cool for them, but it's not going to be something that I'm going to (laughs) watch. I could see it being as okay, yeah, and, and I kind of agree with Rachel Bilson not really quite fitting it, but I can also see it at the same time because if she's coming from like a New York yeah. uh, background and she's going to this, you know, out in the boonies uh, area and having to do this, it would be a little awkward. So it, it kind of fits. And she's cute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that too. But I mean, I could see where it would appeal to some of those people that watch those other shows at one time that it's kind of in comparative with. But uh, I probably won't watch it either. Mike? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad that the CW is getting more... Yeah. Diversity. What? Diversity and more well-written. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm glad they're, they're putting on shows, and we'll see this a little bit later as we go along through the week. But... I'm glad that they're getting more shows that aren't just the One Tree Hills, the Seventh Heavens, the Gossip Girls. Like I, I used when Gossip Girl premiered, I loved that show. I watched that show for the first three and a half seasons. I think after season the end of season three, it wasn't that I lost interest. It was just I was watching other stuff at the time, and I never got back into the show. But honestly, unless the CW has some sort of superhero show <laughs> on. Let's face it, all of their shows right now that are currently airing as we're recording this are for that, you know, 13 to 29. Boo to you, sir. Boo to you. Bracket. Supernatural. That's the only that's the only good standing show left on that station. What I'm saying, okay, okay, yeah, that's an exception. But what I'm saying, like, take that and take, obviously, Smallville's over. Take Supernatural and any other superhero show they might do or might put on there. Take those off, and all you have is the shows for the people that are age 13 to mid-20s. I could agree with that. That's that's what I'm saying here. But I mean Heart of Dixie it does, you know, it does look like just by reading the description it looks like they're going for an older audience. A slightly older, slightly more mature type of show rather than, you know, rerunning Clueless the TV series. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> the, other, the other show we got debuting on Monday that's going to be brand new is a, just a half-hour sitcom. Now, this is the first. We've already had the first of two period pieces with uh, the Playboy Club. This is the first of two Whitney Cummings pieces. Um, and for those of you that don't know Whitney Cummings, uh, she's a pretty popular stand-up comedian. But uh, this one is called Two Broke Girls. Now, this one, Whitney's not in this one, I don't believe. She's just the person who created, created this one. By, and yeah. it's basically two young... Um, New Yorkers, one of which came from a very wealthy background, one of which kind of has that Janine Garofalo vibe to her. And uh, they're basically God. working together as waitresses. Um, and they end up living together. I don't know. It's just, it's your typical sitcom type thing here, but with a little what different the fuck, spin on CBS. Uh, I don't know. The, the preview for it actually looked decent. <laughs> Not something I'm going to watch, but it looked like it could be somewhat funny and could have some some interesting uh, chemistry between these two girls. Um, but it's not going to be something I'm going to watch, so I'm not going to lie. Oh, it starts September it's 19th. Not, on CBS. I can't even. I can't even 
say how many times about I, I can already tell you I will never ever watch this series I'm not a huge sitcom person so it would take a great one for me to watch and there is a couple that I am interested in later on uh, Steve any thoughts on Two Bro Girls before we run down the entire Monday in a snapshot before we move on it, it doesn't look bad uh, the clip I watched I thought it was it was kind of humorous and, and funny right. uh, I could see it, it lasting at least a season or two Mm-hmm. more than possibly some other shows, but uh, pretty much the only thing that you have going for you as far as, like, people name people is Kat Dennings, yeah. who's been in the Nick and Nora's and Thor and 40-Year-Old Virgin and whatnot, but uh, that's pretty much the only thing going for you in that show. I, I don't know how funny it would be as a progressive, con- you know, continuous show, but it kind of gets almost like that Roseanne type vibe to it. Yeah, a little bit. Um, This won't last one season. I think it'll last probably more than one, but it probably won't last much more than two. And and this is kind of how our Monday breaks down. So those of you that have Monday nights that are free and you're looking for something to watch, these are your options on Monday. Now in the, the, first two hour time slot, which we're basically talking uh, Eastern time, eight to, to 10, you have ABC and NBC both go with the reality route. You have Dancing with the Stars on ABC. You have The Sing-Off, which I actually love, on uh, NBC. So you have those two going for those two hours on those two channels. CBS goes the sitcom route. They have How I Met Your Mother, this new one, Two Broke Girls, Two and a Half Men, and Mike and Molly. CW, you get The Gossip Girl, followed by Heart of Dixie. No coincidence that they're backing those two up against each other. No. Uh, and then Fox, you have Terra Nova, followed by House. So those are kind of your options. And, and then the last hour, ABC switches to Castle, CBS switches to Hawaii Five O, and NBC goes to the Playboy Club. So the Playboy Club and Hawaii Five O and Castle will be going against each other there. That might hurt Playboy Club a little bit. Um, so those are your options. If you want to watch sitcoms on Monday, you got to go to CBS. Otherwise, you can check out uh, Terra Nova, Heart of Dixie, Playboy Club, or keep watching Hawaii Five O or House, even though I hate House. Yeah, house sucks. So, uh, what are, are you guys going to be watching anything on Mondays? Any of those shows that you're going to be for sure watching? I'm going to try Playboy Club. I'm also going to try. I'm going to watch the first revamp episode of Two and a Half Men with Ashton just to see how well he does. But I've never, even when Charlie Sheen was on that show, I've never liked that show in general. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to see how, how Ashton fits into that show past his that 70s persona yeah. so. i'm winning <laughs> shut up my my mondays I, i'll record the sing-off just because it's an acapella show and it's much different than american idol and i kind of like the acapella stuff uh and then i'll be watching terra nova for, at least for the beginning and then i guess my 10 o'clock hour i'm gonna probably continue to watch y50 steve anything you're looking for on on that schedule uh, i might try and catch them but i'm not gonna go out of my way to watch any of them Okay. They, none of them. I mean, they they look good, but from what I've seen of the trailers of all of them, but I'm it's not anything I I'd, I'd really kind of jump for. Whereas some later on, I more so would be. So uh, so everybody that's listening, make sure you comment on our page what shows you're looking for on Monday, and uh, I guess that does it for that day of the week. Coming to you on Tuesday. All right, Tuesdays, we are starting out kind of interesting here. Um, I, at surface value, did, would not think I would like this, but this has some old-school nostalgia feeling to it, and it's called Last Man Standing. It's a half-hour sitcom on ABC. It's going to not start until uh, October 11th. Uh, this is Tim, the Toolman Taylor, from Home Improvement, coming back to TV. Uh, and basically, he is playing a character that is basically the last man standing it's 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 a man's man in a woman's world you know it's kind of talking about how um how feminine dominated the world has been maybe lately i don't know if that's a proper way to say it but how guys are getting you know pedicures and manicures and going tanning and and this and that and he's like the last guy guy still going and he's trying to stay strong and it's a sitcom kind of based around that and i not a huge Tim Allen fan, but the trailer for this looked decent to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Steve. All right. 
kind of feeling I was going first <laughs> after. Um, I am very optimistic on this show, despite what the critics say. Yeah. Uh, because, let's face it, critics are always full of shit. <laughs> That's why you have to go with the people like us that actually kind of, you know, have you know a You know what the fuck we're talking about. Well, we have more of a diverse background where we're, and we're more, not getting we're, paid to say the right thing yeah that and we're more open to uh, different ideas of shows uh, critics don't have good taste let's just put it that way anyways um it, it, i like tim allen i like mm. pretty much everything he's involved with for the most part he has some bad films but uh for the most part i, I liked his home improvement i liked uh, a lot of the other stuff he's been in uh, I get the home improvement vibe from it. Uh, it has, like Mike said, it has that old school sitcom vibe that we haven't had for a long time. But, yeah. I mean, I can see it failing on the one hand because it's just not done anymore. They have that really dry humor that kind of sucks, in my opinion, which is why I don't watch television and I go to the old <laughs> stuff. Uh, but I can see it um, standing strong, too, because there's nothing else like it on network television today. Right, and it, when we get to the Tuesday capsule kind of a, of a look, this is a specific strategy by ABC that we'll get back to. But there is a reason they're doing this at this time, at this day. Well, and it's kind of cool they're bringing back Tim Allen to ABC where Home Improvement was. Right. So yeah. it's I, I I really like it. I'm I'm glad that they're bringing him back for another show. Uh, I like his humor, so I'm I'm giving this away thumbs up. What do you think, Mike? The thing about this is, is that, I mean, yes, but, you know, there are certain stars that show up in some of these shows that, you know, you remember from other things, like with me and David Krumholtz in, in, in the Playboy Club. With this, you have two stars that have literally been everywhere. Tim Allen has had home improvement. He's had multiple movies. He's had yeah, Buzz fucking Lightyear. You know, actually, they have a clip of him saying mm -hmm. to infinity and beyond and <laughs> sitting on the couch. And I just started laughing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what really surprised me was, was seeing Nancy Travis in this because she has been, she's been in Matlock. She was in Becker. She she's just been all over the map in different things. And I'm glad that ABC is bringing back two major stars that I actually know who the hell they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it'll help ABC in the long run compared to these other That's networks. True. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another sitcom that Fox is bringing to us on Tuesday, start, starting on uh, September 20th, is a sitcom called New Girl. And this has also been very heavily uh, promoted. This is the, the Zoe Deschanel show, basically. Mm -hmm. um, now, this formula has been done multiple times. This is basically a girl who is moving into an apartment with three rowdy guys in New York. Um, we've seen this type of show where it's one girl with a bunch of guys or, or this or that. Uh, the difference between them and this is this one has Zoe Dashnell, who is the it girl right now, it seems like. Um, Two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. Yeah, and the, what was the other one? There was another one like just a couple of years ago on like TNT or whatever with that one blonde chick with a bunch of guys, and she was kind of trying oh, to be... Yeah. But, uh, you know, the difference is that it has Zoe, and a lot of people will watch anything that she's in right now. Most people, you know, remember her from 500 Days of Summer. Um, you know, she's, she's cool. I like her. Um, I probably won't watch this show, but she might be enough to get other people to watch it. <laughs> I may watch the pilot, but other than that, nah. What do you think, Steve? Um, I might give it a shot, at least an episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I don't know how well I'm gonna like it. I mean, I I like her in films. I'm not sure how I'm gonna like. Yeah, it'll be whole, interesting to see. I, I'm not sure how I'm gonna like this whole uh, version that she's playing in television. In general, right? I, I don't know. I just the, the show idea just doesn't sound. It, it sounds like everything else that's on TV right now, and I think it's going to get lost in the shuffle. It's it's definitely not original. Um, it's not unique. Uh, but like you said, it, it might be interesting to see if she can actually carry a TV show on her own. Um, but I don't know. Like you said, it, it might be worth a watch or something. But like I, I think you're you hit it on the head there. It might get lost in the masses. Um, yeah. 
an hour long show that's coming to Tuesday sees another return of a old 90s TV star and that's Sarah Michelle Gellar coming back in a show on the CW called Ringer um, basically <laughs> it's a story about she has a twin Sarah Michelle Gellar has a twin sister and she takes on the identity of her twin sister only to discover that her sister also has a bounty on her head this is probably the only show only new show so Steve doesn't jump down my throat again Yeah, only show on the CW this year that I will probably watch so it's basically an action drama with Sarah Michelle Gellar back on the CW. I guess it was going to be on CBS, but CW got it. Um, mm-hmm. We all know Sarah Michelle Gellar can carry a show. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, she has a, a following. Uh, it's kind of that action drama, interesting. Maybe it's a, it's new for CW. Yeah. Again, it's they're going towards that whole thing of getting out of the not really, really getting out fully of 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 the teen angst drama thing, but they're they're more diversifying themselves. They're making an effort to be more much more identical to the other networks. Oh yeah, um, Steve, what do you think about Sarah Michelle Gellar? Um, uh, from the trailer, I I like what I saw. I mean, it, it's uh, for one, she's always done good with the kind of action, kind of mysterious, dark thriller shows. Uh, I mean, Buffy and, and just various other things she's been involved with. Um, so it's nice to see her come back to television. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think didn't sh- her show used to be on the, the WB? Yeah. Yeah. Back Buff in the day. Was, yeah. So we have Tim, it's, Tim so Allen going back return. to his channel. And, yeah. People returning to their roots. So I yep. think I think this show will do fairly well. Being that it's she's going to bring all that fame that's followed her over the years uh, with her and all of the older uh, fans of her, as yeah. well as uh, attracting new people on this this station with a, a another kind of original show. We also have another sitcom brought to us by ABC called Man Up, starting October 18th. And I didn't really get to see much on this one, so I don't have a lot to say on it. It's supposed to be in the vein of The Hangover. Um, it centers on three sensitive metrosexual men um, who begin to embrace their more conventionally masculine sides. Uh, did you guys get to see any? I, I must have missed the trailer somehow on this one. <laughs> oh, I God. watched the trailer for this one. So what's this one look like to you? Uh, this one, it, it does have vibes of the hangover in it. Uh, I'll give it that. However, it's... It, Overall, like it's, it kind of makes pot shots at these guys throughout it because uh, their wives or ex-wives or whatever they are just, uh, they just beat them down emotionally. Gotcha. And it, like, there's a scene where they're all playing video games and, uh, or at least I think, yeah, I think it's this one. And uh, the one guy is like, "I'm the man," or whatever, and then the wife says, "Keep it down, you're gonna wake the kids." And then he whispers over the inner or over their their headsets, like he's like, "I'm the man," <laughs> and uh, they're like, "So how'd you get her to agree to to let you play video games?" And then it shows a scene where he says, "Hey, you want to have sex?" And then so that's how he ended up sitting there. It's just I don't know. It's just kind of dumb. Yeah. So this is basically the Simpsons rolled into men of a certain age, rolled into Sex in the City, rolled into every other stereotypical. Uh, pretty much, it's it's. Oh. It, I think it's going to be kind of boring. Uh, it's if you're taking kind of the hangover. I'm so not watching. It, if if you're taking the hangover and bringing it to television, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Although it's not really the hangover because they aren't drunk, but it's still kind of lame. Bad, kind of bad execution. Interesting. Um, we also have an hour long, one more hour long drama, and the people, old fans of Without a Trace, will be happy because uh, Poppy Montgomery, who is basically one of the main stars of Without a Trace, is uh, is the main star here in Unforgettable. She is a person that has a uh, genetic. Um, or disorder. I don't know if you would call it a disorder, but she has a condition called hyperthymesia, which means she cannot forget anything. Every detail of every day 
from her entire life she basically can remember. Like you say, like what were you doing on like June first, nineteen eighty four? She can tell you exactly how what the temperature was, what she was doing, everything. Um, <laughs> except for one day, she cannot remember, and that is the day that her um, sister was killed. And she was, I believe, in the in the criminal. Um, profession at one point and she had got out of that and now it's kind of people trying to get her back into that to help them out because she's really good as far as like the whole investigation and, and seeing things and stuff like that so it's kind of a interesting i don't know it's kind of like along those lines of some of those other crime type dramas that we've seen where one person has kind of a supernatural type ability um it's basically the mentalist but slightly female different. version of the mentalist yeah. now i love poppy montgomery um, and I loved Without a Trace. I can see this one, though, getting lost in the mix of crime dramas. Yeah. Just because there's so many of them. It's, yeah. It's, uh, you've got Bones. You've got... Uh, right. The NCISs, the CSIs. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's going to get lost pretty quick, I think. I mean, I give them credit for trying to put a different spin on it, but it's not the first time somebody's tried to put a different spin on the whole crime drama. And I think this one is going to uh, die fairly early. Yeah, I can I can see that, which is unfortunate for Poppy Montgomery, but I can see that exactly happening. Um, the thing I wanted to bring back up now, looking at Tuesday at a glance, is is ABC's strategy here, because <laughs> on Fox for the first hour on Tuesday you have Glee, and we all know what type of crowd is going to be watching Glee. Boo. You also have on the CW nine hundred two one zero. Ugh. So what ABC is doing is, I think, is they're looking at this and saying, look, all the teens, all the, you know, adolescent, young adolescents, young adults are going to be watching the Glee and 90210 and a, a big female audience is going to watch those. Now, ABC has lined up against those two, two half hour shows, and that is Tim Allen's show, Last Man Standing, and then Man Up, the other sitcom. So they're basically, I assume, trying to capture all of the men for that first hour. Probably, while yeah. the wives and the kids are watching Glee and 90210, which most guys aren't going to want to watch, yeah. maybe they'll tune into Last Man Standing and Man Up. The weird thing is, they're both men shows, but it seems like one of them is more of trying to like take pride in being a man's man, whereas the other one is like these guys who have lost their manliness. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> and then they're also going against uh, NCIS and The Biggest Loser on CBS and NBC. So that's your first hour of Tuesday. Your second hour, um, you have the Dancing with the Stars results. Uh, you have NCIS Los Angeles, uh, The Ringer, which is uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, and then you have the Zoe Deschanel uh, sitcom backed up with Raising Hope on Fox. Mm-hmm. The only things you have on the last hour is Body of Proof from ABC, which is a returning show, uh, Unforgettable, that Poppy Montgomery show, and Parenthood. So yeah. on Tuesdays, I will not be watching much TV. <laughs> I might check out Tim Allen's show. That would be about it. What about you, Steve? Pretty much all I'm going to uh, check out on Tuesday is Tim Allen's show. And yeah, I have to agree. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I'll check out Last Man Standing, and I will also give The Ringer a shot. Um, other than that, Oh Tuesdays. yeah, the ringer too. I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. Other other than those two, Tuesdays is dead to me. Yeah. So let's move on to a different day. Coming to you Wednesday. All right, it's time for Hump Day. Um, Wednesday <laughs> is full of new shows, so let's get right into it. The first one um, that's getting a lot of attention is the NBC show called Up All Night. This is a sitcom half hour show, basically, and this is. Uh, Christina Applegate and Will Arnett. Um, so you have Kelly and Kit, lovely. <laughs> and uh, you know it's kind of like an SNL type, you know, producer Lauren Michaels. You got SNL vibe. You got Will Arnett. You got Christina Applegate. Um, I, There's another chick from uh, Saturday Night Live actually on there. Yeah, uh, Maya Rudolph. Yes. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's it says that there's a workplace portion of the show that's going to center on an Oprah on an Oprah like talk show that Christina Applegate's character produces and uh, Maya Rudolph hosts alongside Nick Cannon, um, and that there's also kind of the stay at home because Will Arnett is a stay at home husband 
who I believe is married to Christina Applegate, who has a newborn baby. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not a big Will Arnett fan. Um, and it, but it does seem like it's the trend right now to have these sitcoms that are SNL type vibes. Yeah, the other one that kind of has that vibe that isn't technically well, it started this year, uh, started earlier this year. Uh, the Disney Channel changed Sunny with a Chance to so random, and it's basically Disney's version of SNL. Yeah, but I mean, we've had the Tina Fey do her show, and we've had like the. You know, we've had a bunch of different Saturday Night Live people doing these sitcoms, and it seems to be like the next in line of that thing. I, I'm just not a huge sitcom fan, and I'm not a huge Will Arnett fan, so I'm going to pass on this. But I'm not saying it's not going to be funny or whatever. I don't know. Steve, are you more of a fan of these people? Um, Christina Applegate more so, but uh, uh, I don't see it lasting long because lately she's been in a lot of short-lived series that <laughs> end up on Netflix. She's got a curse. And, and they're not very good. The only yeah. long standing thing she's been in is Married with Children and then films. That's it. I mean, yeah. so I don't see this lasting as long as what they say. Yeah, I can't see it either. Mike, what about you? Nope. Not nope. going to watch. Wednesday's going to be a dead TV night for me. Oh, God. We're already, he's already done. letting the cat out of the bag here. Um, the most promo show for Wednesday has to be. Simon Cowell's X Factor, which is can we get this guy fucking deported? God damn it! I'm not oh, I'm God. not anti Simon Cowell, but uh, this is a Fox show. Obviously, it's going to be on Wednesday, both Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, you know, it'll do the whole American Idol thing where you have two days a week where it tries to take over yeah. your entire week. Um, yeah, so it's uh, you know American Idol, but with a little different spin on it. You got Simon Cowell, you got uh, Paula Abdul again. Oh my God. Um, and I don't even know all the rest of the people. They they got a whole host of other people that are going to be judges and whatnot. Um, I I don't know. I'll probably catch an episode or two just to see what the format is. But I'm kind of burned out on the whole American Idol stuff. So it would have to be pretty good to keep me going. But yeah, no, I don't know. I guess it does groups instead of just solo acts, and the judges are supposed to mentor the contestants somewhat. But the, the, but the biggest... technically, they're already doing that on America's Got Talent, right? Right. The biggest turnoff for me in this show is that the winner gets a recording contract and five million dollars. Who the fuck needs five million dollars? I do. I no, do. I'm, no, I'm saying why? Why so much? Was a million not enough to give the winner? I think what it is is it's it's Cowell trying to upstage American Idol in America because if if you look at it, he started on American Idol. He then went to America's Got Talent, and then he left that show. Um, I didn't ever remember him being on America's Got Talent. I don't remember remember being on there. I think it was that one guy, and then they had uh, that Brandy chick, and then they had uh, David Hasselhoff. Yeah, Hasselhoff on there. But I could have sworn he was on. Mark I didn't think he was, but I just I just don't see the necessity of putting a five million cash prize. You're already giving him a recording contract. A million dollars yeah. is enough. Well, I mean, and there's so many of these type shows. I mean, you got the Voice, you got the the sing karaoke off. one, the Sing Off. You've got the uh, America's Got Talent. Yeah. Uh, this is another one that's not needed. Uh, yeah. I think America's Got Talent is pretty much the only decent one on right now because it's right. not he was just... the executive producer on America's Got Talent, so oh. he wasn't actually on the show, but he was the executive producer. So gotcha. I mean, I can kind of see why that show exists, but this one's kind of unneeded. And as sad as I have, I, I am never going to watch this. But <laughs> as sad as this is, it's probably going to end up staying on TV a while. And well, I don't it's, think it can. It's been going on the UK for seven years now. So it's a huge hit over in the UK. So yeah. it's not like it's 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 already do, ironed it's out not its a details. New concept. Yeah, it's or, but it's already ironed out any of its problems. So it should be ready to go. Um, it's going to be popular, but whatever. Um, <laughs> next one is Free Agents, which is another of the sitcoms that's going to be premiering on Wednesday. It's an NBC show. Um, I'm sorry, this one looks stupid. Um, and, I, and it's not that I don't like the people. It's Hank Azaria and Catherine Hahn, who are basically two executives, business execs, who are kind of, it's the whole reluctant romance angle. 
Uh, uh, and it, it bores the, the trailer bored me. This is yep. the thing. Do you like The Office? Um, I, I think it's funny, but I don't watch it. I don't like The Office, and it, I'll tell you why. It's because it's that whole British mm-hmm. comedy. Uh, this is based off another British series of the same name. Gotcha. So uh, this automatically started getting a thumbs down, and then I watched the trailer, and I'm like, wow, this is kind of stupid. I'm like, I, wanna, I, I, I thought it was going to be it. good just from seeing Hank Azaria and uh, uh, Catherine Hahn on there, and then I was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, and just this is like not the right time for this type of sitcom. Oh my god! And it's just not going to work. That's the bottom line with that one. Just, you can write it down right now, guys. This one's not going to get more than like five or six episodes. I agree. So you know, it's not going to get five or six episodes. Is the one at the next? Oh my god! Oh. Another another CW new one coming. They're trying to come up with all kinds of new stuff, and that is a starting September 14th, a show called. Now, I'm going to actually spell it out. I'm not going to say it. It's H, the letter H, the number 8, and the letter R. Hater. Yes. For all those uh, bastards that can't actually spell in real life. And this is more of like a, almost like a reality show here. This is people confronting C-list celebrities they despise the most on national TV. It's Jerry Springer. Yeah, hosted by Mario Lopez. People card... People... You know, confronting Kim Kardashian or Snooki or Barry Bonds or people like that, this uh, is a train wreck. It's going to be like, Slayer, hey, what I hate your guts. You become? Yeah, Mario Lopez is desperate, and this is he's, the CW. He's, he's a, a hosting whore. That's all he's become lately. Now, see, with the other shows, CW was trying to be more like the network shows. With this show, they're trying to be more like True TV or something like that. Yeah, pretty much. Why do you hate this celebrity? Because I think they're stupid. And so you're going to confront them, and it's going to end in like some type of argument or something, or they're going to start pushing each other, need a bouncer, and then Jerry Springer's going to come in, and either that or the celebrities are going to like give them something and make up for it, and they're going to be all here. Here's a thousand dollars. Oh, thank you. It's called the Hater, and if you watch it, you're going to hate it. And we're going to follow that interestingly with a show called I Hate. My Teenage Daughter, which is a another Fox sitcom. Uh, it's actually not starting until about Thanksgiving. It's Jamie Presley from My Name is Earl and uh, Katie Finnerin, Finnerin from uh, Wonder Falls. Um, I'm sorry. It's Can two, we just move on? It's, it's, i got to give the premise. It's two moms who discover that their teen daughters have turned into the same type of mean girls that tormented them. And it's two moms that hate their two teenage daughters, and it looks retarded. This show's going to commit suicide within the first three episodes. <laughs> no, it's not even going to. It's going to get the pilot, and that's it. They're piloting this show like One can right only before be so Thanksgiving. Lucky. Nobody's going to watch it. You can't have any faith in a show that you're piloting a couple days before Thanksgiving. Why would you even and, and 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 that begs the question? Why would you even pilot the show? It's like they must have had so much, or they must have had to have shown it. They're like, we have to show it. We'll do it here. <laughs> I don't know. This show is going to be just as dumb as Hater. Moving uh, on. <laughs> yeah, moving on. ABC. We have a hour long show here, so we're switching from the sitcoms called Revenge. Um, it's a woman, Emily Van Camp. Who uh, who adopts a new identity and moves to the Hamptons Hamptons to wage a vendetta against every person who had a role in destroying her family. So it's kind of like a revenge drama type thing. It's it's the opposite of My Name Is Earl, basically, where he's trying to make up for every every wrong thing he ever did to people. This chick is out to get everyone that did her her family wrong. Which. You know, it's a good change from everything else we've been talking about so far on Wednesday, so maybe it has a chance. Yes. I don't know. I don't know who it doesn't look bad. Either. Wednesday just is like the worst night of the week for television, I guess, well, now. It's getting That's worse. It's movie night. It's getting worse because the next one, which is also an ABC show, back to the sitcoms. Apparently, Wednesday is not a good night for sitcoms. Suburgatory. Oh, my God. You killed it with your name. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the based, song they played with it. Yes. Uh, uh, an overprotective single father decides to move with a 16-year-old daughter away from the dangers and temptations of Manhattan into the suburbs. And this looks terrible. I mean, Then you have a bunch of plastic surgery horrors that yeah. it just... 
it it I, I uh, this is uh, this is sad. ABC is actually billing this series as a combination of Juno's heightened reality with Father Knows Best's heart. Oh, okay, hold on. Repeat the plot again. It's it's a single dad moving into the suburbs with his 16 year old daughter. Yes, because he's uh, because she's been subjected to the temptations of Manhattan. And so okay, okay, she, okay. I, I I read it wrong because the way that it read to me and the way that you the way I heard you reading it is mm-hmm. that the dad is in New York and she's out in the suburbs by herself. And oh, I'm no. like, whoa, 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 wait, why the fuck is the father moving in with the six? <laughs> and it, it, it no. does have Jeremy Sisto in it, who's a who I don't dislike, but and Alan Tudyk, right? Um, um, I think I, I think it will be humorous. On like a uh, one-off type thing, like uh, if you just happen to catch it mm-hmm. uh, as like a space filler in between something you actually want to watch, um, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I, I I wouldn't recommend it because honestly, if if you've ever seen the movie Idiocracy, yeah, this is along the same lines of how society is actually going. All I have to say is thank God for old shows on Wednesdays, the returning shows and not the new shows. Um, if you look at the Wednesday capsule here in a nutshell, we start off with a bunch of sitcoms because we've got ABC doing The Middle, which is a returning show, and then The Suburgatory. And you got NBC doing Up All Night, the, the Saturday Night Live one, and Free Agents, um, which I thought looked stupid. And then you got Hater for that hour on CW. You got Survivor that hour on CBS, and then you got the X Factor. So X Factor is going to demolish all those shows, and I'm guessing that's what these other shows did: is they put their worst shows up against the X Factor because so they, they knew they first. were going to lose. Yeah, they knew they were going to lose. Um, the next hour, the nine o'clock hour Eastern Time, you have Modern Family and Happy Endings on ABC, more sitcoms. Uh, America's the Next Top Model on CW. The next little part of the X Factor, followed by I Hate My Teenage Daughter, Harry's Law, and Criminal Minds. Then the last hour of Wednesday, you have that revenge show, but it's going up against CSI and Law and Order Special Victims Unit. It's going to bomb just because of those two. It's, yeah. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying for my Wednesday. I might check out a little of the X Factor just the first couple times, but my Wednesday basically is going to consist of Criminal Minds at 9 o'clock, Followed by probably Law and Order. Yeah. Um, I'm not watching television Wednesday. <laughs> I love Criminal Minds, so I'll be watching that. But the rest of it, the new shows, I'm not going to watch hardly any of them on Wednesday. I'm not watching any new shows. If I watch anything on network TV on Wednesday, it'll be SVU. Yeah. Uh, Everybody else will be going straight from the X Factor to CSI, but. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's Can see. we move on now? Yeah, let's see what the last two days of the week are going to leave us. Hopefully some better new shows. Coming to you Thursday. All right, so Thursday, we're starting off with actually one of the ones I'm most interested in, and that is CBS's new hour-long show called Person of Interest, which starts September 22nd. Uh, this is from J.J. Abrams, who is like a god right now in entertainment world. Star Trek, Mission Impossible 3. Lost. Uh, Lost, Alias, yeah, uh, Felicity. Yeah. And this show, you take Michael Emerson, who almost single-handedly carried most of Lost, and you take Jim Caviezel, who <laughs> I've never Jesus. seen him in a TV show. I never have no. either. Um, and basically, they have a high-tech system that can somewhat predict crimes before they happen. And Minority this crazy Report. Ability. Yeah, so he's it's kind of like Minority Report a little bit. Uh, I think Michael Emerson must play the crazy billionaire who uh, has this machine and he recruits a CIA agent, which is Jim Caviezel. And it's basically a drama. Um, you know, it's kind of a weird type of premise and a weird plot, but I like Michael Emerson and Jim Caviezel so much and J.J. Abrams that I will at least begin watching it. I just don't know how long I'll watch it, but I'm hope- I have hopes for it. Yeah, it looks really interesting. I'll probably catch the first couple episodes. Yeah, and see where it goes from there. Steve? Um, Steve? Um, this show does look the most promising, I'd have to say, out of Thursday. Yeah. Uh, if there was one show I had to pick, I'd have to say it'd be this one, just because mm-hmm. of the potential, and because I like all of the things that this is uh, kind of grabbing from and referencing, and some of the people involved. 
Right. I mean, hell, you've got one of the Nolan brothers in there as well. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Um, Christopher's brother. Yes. So, um, another one you have on Thursday is an hour-long reboot. Charlie's oh, Angels. I blame for, Hawaii Five-0 for this because it was the most successful show last year, so they must have thought, let's do it with another show. Well, it's also produced by Drew Barrymore, who was in the films. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's funny that they keep bringing back old shows, and I hope it bombs. I think it will. The problem I have with this is, how do Alfred Goff and Miles Millar go from Smallville, which was a fairly decent show as far as telling the you know the the younger adventures of Clark Kent for 10 years to Charlie's Angels like really we really need a like okay Hawaii 50 I've seen episodes here and there I haven't I'm going to have to go back that that's one of those shows that I'm going to have to actually go back when it either hits Netflix or hits DVD or whatever and actually catch it from the beginning but you know Hawaii 50 Charlie's Angels it's like, oh my god, they have to throw in at least two reboots every new television season. And the sad thing is, as much as I like Hawaii 5 its success is probably going to lead to more of that type yeah. of stuff. But we'll see. Um, we also have a sitcom coming to us from CBS called How to Be a Gentleman. Uh, and the trailer for this looks absolutely terrible. Um, it's a comedy that has an uptight magazine advice columnist who learns about life with the help of an old high school classmate who's a personal trainer and looks retarded. It's got Kevin Dillon, Dave Foley, um, and my only reason to even enjoy the trailer was because of Reese Darby, who I love from Flight of the Concords, is in this. Um, but this looks like maybe one of the dumbest sitcoms that's going to premiere this year, in my opinion. Uh Dave Foley, wasn't he the guy that was in um, Celebrity Poker Showdown on yeah. Bravo? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, he's the God. advice that, columnist, I believe, and he's getting advice from Kevin Dillon. the worst roles ever. Yeah, this show is not worth watching for anybody. So mm. uh, uh, just pass on this one. Um, uh, yeah, no. We'll move I right agree. on. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> There's another hour uh, show coming from NBC called Prime Suspect. Um, this is apparently a retake of a UK series. Mm -hmm. um, it's a police procedural show with uh, Maria Bello, um, Aiden Quinn, um, Peter Garrity, and Jay Moore, I guess, is going to be in there a little bit. Um, it's just another crime drama. You know what? Honestly, as I said in the beginning of this episode of the podcast here, with potentially Law & Order Special Victims Unit maybe going away the next couple of years, you really don't have any other Law & Order franchise shows anymore. That's the problem that the networks are facing is that they have to come up with crime dramas to replace Law and Order, but you're never going to be able to replace what that franchise built up over the last 20, 21 years. You're, yeah. you're just not. I mean, SVU, and I know I, I keep going back to SVU, but SVU started in 1999. It's 2011 now. That show's been going strong for a long time, and with it potentially ending in the next couple of years, the networks are going to have to pick up. And this is the types of shows that they're trying to find something that now, will be the next Law & Order. The problem they're running into, though, is that they have either bad writing mm -hmm. or bad casting decisions. Oh, yeah. And so there's nothing, not, not a good combination in either direction that's pulling a strong uh, following to replace these. Yep. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. I think people are almost burned out on that genre. And it goes back to, it also goes back to, you know, nowadays, everybody is, Hollywood is concentrating on, well, we don't want to get this person because they were known for this. We want to get an unknown. We want to get, we want to get all these unknowns and we want to make these unknowns the, the stars of the 21st and the 22nd century. And it's like, oh God, I don't even know, like half the people that we've talked about in this episode that 
a few of them, I don't even know who the hell they are because I just don't know who the hell they are, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. We also have an interesting, uh, once again, CW is all over the place. Um, they have a new I'd show. I'd rather have them be all over the place than stuck in one. Yeah, that's true. They have a new show called The Secret Circle, which, um, based uh. on a young adult book trilogy of the same name by, uh, Vampire's Diaries author L.J. Smith. Um, it's basically about a person, a grandmother, or a kid that goes to live with her grandmother and discovers that she comes from a long line of witches and holds the key to a brewing battle between good and evil. Charms 2.0. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. So that's where CW is going on Thursdays. And uh, we also have one more sitcom, the second from Whitney Cummings. This one is called Whitney, and this one looks to be the worst of the two to me. I agree. Um, the two yep. broke girls looked a little bit funny from the trailer. Whitney looks looks stupid. I didn't laugh at all during the entire trailer. No, nope. no. At least the other one I did. Yeah, I laughed at two broke yeah. girls. This one I did not laugh at all. Yeah. Um. So, so I don't know. Looking at Thursday in, in a nutshell, you have uh, you start off with Charlie's Angels going against the uh, the Vampire Diaries which is another CW Supernatural one. Then you have sitcom battle between CBS and NBC, CBS doing the Big Bang Theory and How to Be a Gentleman, with NBC doing Community and then Parks and Recreation. And then they're all going against the X-Factor results on Fox. Um, Then the next hour you have Grey's Anatomy, Person of Interest, The Secret Circle, Bones, and then The Office and Whitney. And then the last hour, you don't really have much of a choice. You're going to get a crime type drama because there's private practice of the mentalist and prime suspect. Yeah. I will not be watching TV on Thursdays. I won't be watching network TV. I'll be watching, a, like, I <laughs> honestly, I, I hate to say this, but I would much rather sit through Sweet Life on Deck than any of these shows. I'd rather watch Archer I'd ra- on FX. I'd rather watch Hannah Montana than the. <laughs> Well, other than Person of that's, Interest, that's kind of canceled. But I'm just saying. It's yeah. Like, oh, I forgot. I will be watching Person of Interest in the in the middle yeah, hour. Yeah, and I, you know, and I will be watching Big Bang Theory. But other than that, as far as new shows, Wednesday and Thursday have kind of sucked. Yep. Yeah, I'm not getting into the ones I that are currently on TV. Just the ones right. that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Coming to you Friday. So Friday, we don't really get much for new shows. Um, we get two, basically. One's called A Gifted Man, which is an hour-long CBS show coming September 23rd. Um, it's uh, basically a surgeon, self-absorbed surgeon, who is like great at what he does, um, but doesn't really have too many life skills or people skills. And he <sighs> begins seeing visions of his dead ex-wife. Oh God! This was the okay. Yeah, this was um, the I didn't care for. And yeah, this trailer I didn't really care for. It stars Patrick Wilson, yeah, um, which I'm not a huge fan of, anyways. And I don't like surgeon stories. And then you mix that with him seeing his dead ex-wife. I'll pass. Yep. It doesn't look bad to me. It doesn't look great either, yeah. but it's. It, it would be fine enough to sit through if there's nothing else on. Makes sense. However, I believe Supernatural will be on around that time <laughs> on the CW, so yeah. this uh, station can take a hike during that <laughs> night. <laughs> and the other new one is a show called Grimm, which is an NBC hour-long show. It's one of two shows that decided to go the fairy tale route this year. Um says it's boasting one of the least liked pilots and worst time slots of the fall shows. It's a... Uh, oh, goodness. There's another one called Once Upon a Time. But basically, Grimm is a crime procedure where a organ cop is charged with protecting the world from fantastical characters who seem not to want humans to live ap- have, happily ever after. It's like Grimm's fairy tales come to life type bizarre world. No, just no. <laughs> this is weird for NBC to be doing this. I know it's them saying, look, we have all these different uh, vampire movies and uh, True Blood and all this other stuff going. Let's Maybe this is the time to do this like fairy tale, realistic, but serious, bloody crime drama type show. But mm. weird decision, NBC. 
this is not going to work. This one is not going to work, and Once Upon a Time, which is going to be an ABC show, is not going to work. Yeah. In my opinion, I don't know. I Yeah, I don't see anything happening as far as these shows. <laughs> so your Friday schedule, you can go with A Gifted Man, the first hour, which is the one we just talked about, um, which is the first hour going against Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, Nikita on CW, Kitchen Nightmares, and Chuck. The second hour, you have Grimm, Fringe, Supernatural, uh, CSI New York, and Shark Tank. And then you got uh, Blue Bloods in the last hour by itself, basically, going against Dateline NBC in 2020. Yeah. Um, so your middle hour, you can get your Supernatural fix with either Supernatural, Fringe, or Grimm. Yeah. I'll be watching Shark Tank, though. I'll be mm. watching Shark Tank and Supernatural. <laughs> Coming to you Sunday. First of all, you yeah. have uh, Once Upon a Time, which is the other version of a fairy tale type thing come to life, and it's ABC's version. Um, it's like, I don't even want to go there. It's just, yeah. I guess if you're a huge fairy tale fan and like stuff that's like weird and comes to life, and it almost reminds me of like something freaking uh, the guy that did uh, Tim Burton would do or something like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But so that's one show that's going on. Then you have this show. The next one, my mom's actually really excited about. Um, and this is something that maybe moms would like. It's called Pan Am. It's uh, the other ABC hour-long show, and this is the other period piece. So you have the Playboy Club, and you have Pan Am, which are both set in the '60s. Um, and this one's just kind of a airline stewardesses and pilots. Pilots. Um, you have some espionage plots in there. You have just kind of the whole jet set age. Um, mm-hmm. It could be an interesting period piece. I I think there's a, a, an audience for it. I'd be interested to see out of this and Playboy Club which ones do better. I'm almost betting Playboy Club just because sex sells, and yeah, I'm sure yeah. that they're gonna. I'm sure that that'll be in this at some point. And a uh, lot of people might think, not to cut you guys off, but a lot of people might think just looking at the title of this. They might be thinking it's a show, like, without even reading anything about just seeing the title, they might think it's a show about the Pan Am plane crash and lawsuits and all that stuff. Yeah, I can see that. My, I know my wife is actually interested in this show, but she's like, it probably won't last very long. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the motto of this episode with most of these shows. They probably won't last very long. Yeah, I can see that. Um, she says, I think it'll have intelligent writing, but I doubt it'll last very long. Yeah. And these are these are possible these are could be on Saturday or Sunday. This is like the weekend schedule, so it's not just Saturday that we're talking about. Um and the other one is Alan Gregory, which is a half hour Fox animated comedy. Um Starring Jonah Hill uh, as an ultra pretentious seven year old who is forced to attend elementary school with regular kids and it has Will Forte and French Stewart providing voices. Um, apparently, they've only ordered seven episodes, so it's not gonna, I don't know if it'll last past that or not. This, uh, this, this is this will sum it up. This is like Napoleon Dynamite mixed with the critic, uh, mixed with Beavis and Butthead. Mixed with uh, what's that other show? Ah, uh, shit. Archer. Uh, no. Well, I, I could kind of see that, but not really. Uh, uh, Spaceballs, the animated series. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah, so th- th- that's that's what this looks like to me, and well, it's, it's got a little bit of Family Guy rubbed in it too, in the sense of this kid. But I think this show is incredibly stupid, which means it'll probably get ordered for another uh, batch of episodes. Right. Well, all these shows are actually Sundays. None of these are on Saturday. The um, Once Upon a Time is in your 8 o'clock hour on Sunday against The Amazing Race, and Pan Am is your 10 o'clock hour on Sunday against CSI Miami. Um, and the, this Alan Gregory just fits in with the Fox animation block on Sunday. You're going to get the Cleveland show, The Simpsons, Alan Gregory, Family Guy, American Dad. They need to just bring back King of the Hill and kill this show. <laughs> so so that's what you're getting on your weekend schedule as far as new shows. Just those three, Pan Am, Once Upon a Time, and Alan Gregory. Now, some of you may be wondering about a few shows that you thought you've heard of but we haven't talked about. Most likely because they are not debuting right away. They are the mid-season replacement shows. Um, there's a show called Apartment 23. Trailer seems interesting. There's a show called Good Christian Bells. A show called Missing, The River, Scandal, Work It, um, The 2-2, two, two, 
the frame remodeled. The one I've seen the most about uh, Alcatraz. This looks amazing. This looks really interesting. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, aliens or, but it just it looked really interesting to me. It's another J.J. Abrams. It st- stars uh, Jorge Garcia from Lost and Sam Neill, who <laughs> yeah. from Jurassic Park. I haven't seen him in forever. Uh, that looks really interesting. Um, the Finder, which is a spinoff from Bones. That's my only issue with this. It's like the trailer. It shows Booth and Bones through the majority of the trailer. It's, it's got Michael Clark Duncan though. No, I and and that's great. The I have no, I have nothing against the two guys that are actually starring in this show. Mm-hmm. But the fact that that like I don't dislike the show Bones, but I've never actually gotten into the show. It's kind of like meh. It's there, but it's like. Oh my God! Why are these? You know, I guess it's a crossover pilot app to where like the Bones characters are crossing over to to set this pilot up. I hope to God that Booth and Bones are only in the pilot because yeah, I'm sure they will be. I think I think that they'll be in it, kind of intermittent, kind of uh, at little pieces of it. I doubt that they're going to have a mainstay in it. It's at least um, a better way though than. It's like, okay, everybody else, like the CSIs and the NCISs and law and orders are, are like, completely oh, let's, different. Well, they're like, let's just stick uh, a different city and it'll be CSI Miami or CSI this or well, NCIS this. At least this is a different way to come up with a spinoff. Well, in, in, in NCIS's history, in, in NCIS's case, it had a better way of spinning off because originally ncis the main show with mark Harmon, spun off from jag so cbs had jag spun it off into ncis and then ncis spun off into ncis la but the characters that are in the la show at least two or three of them know gibbs and and denozo and all that so so i mean spinning it off that way isn't bad but yeah i mean csi csi miami and csi new york those are all three individual shows yeah I will give them credit though. What they're doing though is they're showing Bones in its in the fall slot. Yeah, this show is going to be the mid season when yep. most shows go on hiatus, and then Bones will come back in the spring slot with new shows. Right. So yeah. it's kind of an interesting way that they're doing that, and it yeah. might help. Um, you also have another animated show called Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything else. It's Napoleon Dynamite in animated form. Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking forward to this at all. <laughs> and uh, pretty much the only thing from Fox, this this particular block, is the Alcatraz and the Finder. Everything yeah. else is garbage. Yeah, then you have one called Touch with Kiefer Sutherland. There's not really a, a whole lot of information garbage. about that one. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. They had eight years of Agent Jack Bauer kicking ass. They're gonna bring him back in a completely different show with no, Danny Glover. The touch. He's got the touch. Anyway, um, that's the only thing that makes <laughs> the show absolutely awesome if they use Stan's the touch. <laughs> then you got uh, from NBC. Are you there, vodka? It's me, Chelsea. N- enough said. Awake. Um, Awake actually looks pretty interesting. I will say, um, it's a police detective whose life is split into two alternative realities. Um, one of which he's in a car accident and then he's living these two different alternate realities, one of which his only his wife survives and one of which only his son survives. And oh, oh which network is doing this? This is uh, uh, NBC. So, okay, okay. This looks actually interesting. I thought this looked very interesting. It might be a little slow at points, um, but the guy... It's not been done. Yeah, and, and, and it's just weird because you don't know... If either reality is real, he's trying to figure out which reality is real or if either reality is real and trying to – and he's basically to the point where he doesn't want to be cured because he wants to have Those both realities. of these people still alive. I, th- um, I think it will end up being one of those Inception mind fucks at the end of it. Well, this is going to be one of those shows that's really creative, really well written, and lasts about two episodes. And see, that's the problem because when I when you guys first started talking about this and you mentioned about the two different realities, Kevin, the first thing I thought of was it's back too much in, for people to think about, too. Well, true, but the first thing I thought of was back in two thousand eight when Night Rider was going on. NBC also premiered My Own Worst Enemy. My Own Worst Enemy starred Christian Slater. It was him 
basically having two personalities that did not know anything about each it, it was like a spy drama type thing mm-hmm. this is this is reminding me so much of that and because it's nbc doing it it's like yeah this isn't gonna last he has a psychologist in both realities different ones yeah and in the one it's bd wong from svu oh sweet <laughs> so that's kind of interesting um you also have bent uh, from NBC, Best Friends Forever, a.k.a. BFF. I will never watch it just for that. Uh, how about this one? Betty White's Off Their Rockers, <laughs> a punk for senior citizens in which Betty White leads a group of senior citizens in a series of pranks on poor, defenseless younger folk. <laughs> so it's like punk for old people. That yeah. could be interesting. Um, Fashion Star, which is just another Project Runway type thing. Yeah. How about this? The Return of Fear Factor. Oh, God. Yay. Eight new episodes, right. episodes of the once-canceled game show will uh, premiere during the 2011-2012 season with Joe Rogan returning as host. My wife will be happy. <laughs> I'll watch it. Um, the Firm, which is based on John Grisham's novel, The Firm. And the film oh, with Tom on. Cruise. And that, the film with Tom Cruise. Yeah. I don't know. Could be interesting. I think this will be good. Set a decade after the events depicted in the original story. Um, I'll I will I'll probably give that one a shot. Josh, I will give that a shot. I don't know about Josh Lucas playing. The Mid- only Mid- thing Mid- that sucks is that it's a 10 p.m. time, yeah. and most yeah. people have to work early on Monday morning. Right, it's a Sunday night show, 10 p.m. slot. Um, and then the other one is a NBC show called Smash, which is a new version of Glee, oh. starring Catherine McPhee, Angelica Houston, Deborah Messing. Um, anyway. Oh. So that's just some of your mid-season replacements. You know, there's not as much information of those, but we just at least wanted to run down the list for you. Um, yeah. Is there anything that any of you guys see in the cable paid channels or the um, non-network channels that you want to bring up? I mean, we apologize to those of you that get HBO Showtime and all those. We don't, so we can't talk about them a lot. Yeah. Um, there's the not really only- a lot coming out. The only two I see in there that look remotely good uh, that I would watch if I had those stations, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure that at some point, because Netflix does have a deal with stars and does get periodically different shows, if not, I could probably watch them on the actual website and plug in my laptop to my TV, but uh, is the one from Showtime called Homeland, Mm-hmm. And it's a psychological thriller. Uh, it's got you know your your CIA and uh, kind of it kind of jumps into uh, Al Qaeda stuff and some other uh, various counterterrorism. Crap. Yeah, it's got Claire Danes in it too. Yeah, yeah. so I mean I, I could see that doing fairly well. <laughs> And the other one is Boss on Stars with Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> he just looks like a fucking badass right there. Yeah, he does. And he's a, he's a powerful mayor in Chicago, but he also has a degenerative brain disorder um, that he hasn't let anybody in on. <laughs> that one could be interesting. Paint him blue, give him fangs. Beast uh, the Boss. <laughs> How about, uh, I just got to mention this one because this one cracks me up. Uh, there's a show called... Let me get to it here. Life's too short following the fame seeking little person Warwick Davis. Oh my god. But that said it might not even de- debut until 2012. How about the return of Beavis and Butthead? Are you shitting me? No. For, for the first no. time since 1997, new episodes will air on MTV this fall. And another reason of why? <laughs> why is hey, this if it knocks, If it somehow gets Jersey Shore off the air... Ain't that the fucking truth. I'd rather watch Beavis and Butter than fucking Jersey Shore. As far as some of the other new shows that I saw that I wanted to bring up, uh, <laughs> I will not watch this because it'll be a train wreck, but Hulk Hogan's MCW. Yeah, I, Hulk Hogan's Micro Championship Wrestling. Now, I watch a lot of the True TV Network because I watch a lot of their, like, the world's dumbest or the most shocking or, you know, wildest police video type shows. I've seen ads for this thing, and it's like, God, Hulkster, what have you done between selling out to Rent-A-Center and this? Jesus Christ, dude. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no. Uh, Storage Wars in general, like, there's so many now. 
No, no, it's not just Storage Wars. There's a, there, Storage Wars is a show on any. It's about these these people that do these these storage auctions, and that's getting its own spinoff in Storage Wars Dallas. Um, but I started watching Storage Wars, the original series, and after that, True TV has their own version of auction hunting show. Uh, Spike has its own ver- it, it's like there's all these different auction hunting shows now and it's like really? The, I mean I, I, I actually enjoy them I watch pretty much all of them yeah. because they're all different characters and stuff but it's like wow <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, two other a couple comedies I just want to mention real quick there's a uh, not that I'm going to watch them but there's two on the Adult Swim um, one called <laughs> China I L China Illinois. I don't know what that if it's China Illinois or China I L. I don't know. I don't know. There's another one on um, Adult Swim called The Heart She Holler, and then there's another one on MTV called Good Vibes about two surfer dudes. Mm, God. <laughs> and then there's a TV Land show called The X's. I didn't yeah. know TV Land did new shows, but yeah, they they've been doing new stuff for a while now. Okay. So the, the, there's a little of everything. Yeah, the only one that I'll probably end up watching just because I constantly watch Disney Channel is I'll probably end up watching that show, Jesse, uh, with Debbie Ryan, just because between Disney Channel, True TV, and HGTV, that's those are pretty much the three channels I watch. Gotcha. <laughs> well, besides like when Thundercats is on, <laughs> I could see that look. I could see that looking good though. The that Jesse show, but yeah, uh, she's. It's basically what she is, is just to give people a quick rundown. Sorry to interrupt you, Steve, but it's basically this kid finds her and asks her to be her nanny. And it's basically a blended family. And this family is really, really eccentric. And Jesse, it's basically today's version of of, um, Charles and Charlie, Prince of Bel Air or the nanny. But it's not as annoying as the nanny because Debbie Ryan doesn't have this voice. Yeah, yeah, Debbie Ryan doesn't have that. So hopefully there's something that we've mentioned in the course of this discussion that you'll be able to find, whether you like your network shows, um, you know, your cable shows, you always have your HBO and Showtime this year is is mainly going to be some of the ones that they've already debuted in previous years. They're not adding a whole lot, minus the one that that Steve talked about there on Showtime and the Kelsey Grammer one. Um, and then, of course, you always have a bunch of new reality stuff and all these different uh, True TV, TLC, you know, those types of channels. So, I will say that even though I, it kind of pisses me off how USA does their their schedules of oh summer season oh winter season i will say that i am continue i am going to continue to watch white collar because the way that they ended the summer season just taking it into when it comes back for winter episodes is just they've ended those seasons on such cliffhangers and they pay them off so well on white collar um and plus tiffany ambethyson is still hot i disagree anyway whatever so uh so yeah so leave us your comments on what sh- on what shows you're most likely uh going to watch or which ones you're most excited on Didn't, you know regardless of what we said what are you most looking forward in this new season Yes so we hope you enjoyed this episode of Geekcast Radio and wish you'll join us next time when we'll be talking about social networking for now I am TFG1 Mike with Optimus Solo and Steve Megatron Phillips Thank God you guys got it right this time Thank you for listening. Until next time. You've just listened to GeekCast Radio on the GeekCast Radio Network. There are several ways to get in contact with us or leave feedback for the show. First, visit the website geekcastradio.com where you can comment on all of our different podcasts. Second, you can rate our show and leave us feedback in iTunes. Third, Follow us on Twitter at Geekcast Radio. Fourth, become a fan on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash Geekcast Radio. Call the voicemail line 502-526-5821. Please remember to tell us the show you are leaving the message for and your name. So until next time, unleash the geek in you.